We have a giveaway going on currently for the Destiny 2 Forsaken Annual Pass. To be in with a chance to win, simply click on the link in the description below for many ways to enter. Good luck, and now on with the usual broadcast. How's it going all? And as I said in the previous video, the next few weeks, in fact all the way to the new year, is going to be crazy busy in the world of Destiny. How I'm gonna split my time between everything is beyond me, we have so much to go through so expect multiple videos over this week as more and more information becomes available and as I create more content for you amazing people. The road ahead is what Bungie is calling this and boy oh boy are they looking ahead in a big big way. Let's start with the roadmap from now till Feb 5th. It seems the new Forge activity will have 4 versions of each one having its own horde mode activity coming at separate times and yes get this we have matchmaking. It's finally happening people. Matchmaking. These forges have you not only manufacturing your weapons but hopefully more. Weapons shouldn't only be the only thing here, hopefully we'll be able to craft armour as well. That's not confirmed, at the present time we only know of the weapons, but time will tell. Hopefully we should be getting some cool black armoury loot as well. I can't wait for December the 4th to get stuck in, and I'm hoping you guys will be here to join me along the way. If you look at the roadmap that's available, on December the 4th you get the Volanda Forge, December the 7th you get the Gothanon Forge with the new raid, which I'll get into a little more later. On December the 18th you have the Izanami Forge, Jan 8 you have the Niobe Labs, on Jan 29th you have the Exotic Quest to Draw, which is most likely the last word, on Feb 5th you have the Crimson Days. On December the 11th we get the return of the dawning and hopefully it's not a repeat of what happened last year. With that being said, the dawning and the crimson are free to all players of destiny. Everything else that I mentioned is locked to the annual pass. Next we have the road ahead. The map for the annual pass and everything it will bring. Yes confirmed the power cap is increasing by 50 and will increase and eventually get to 750 by the end of the annual pass and this will be available to all Destiny 2 Forsaken purchases. You will need Destiny 2 Forsaken in order to be able to take advantage of these power increases. With that said, other than the power increases and the Gambit additions, Everything else from Crimson Days to the Dawning to the Spring Event to the Solstice of Heroes, exotic quests will be available for free to all Destiny 2 players. So even if you just purchased Destiny 2 Forsaken and ignored that in your pass, there is still enough content there until the end of August to keep you busy. With that said, if you do opt for the annual pass content, you will be getting a plethora of items and game modes as well. You'll go from Black Armory Weapons and Gear, to the new Raid, to Forges, to Exotic Quest, Joker's Wild Weapons and Gear, new Gambit Experiences, Zerb Bounties are being locked to the Annual Pass, you'll be getting more Raids, new 6 player matchmaking activity, and a couple of redacted events that they aren't ready to reveal yet. So there is enough here for non-Annual Pass owners to be satisfied with, but if you're looking for that complete package, if you're looking for the complete Destiny experience, if you want everything, the annual pass is the way to go, and considering it's $29.99, $9.99 per DLC, that's not really that bad when it comes to all the content that you're getting. I think the value here is pretty good, but if you want to wait and see, check out my Warmind review, check out my 7 weeks of After the Dreaming City, you will get a rough idea of how I review these stuff and how I look at them. Within the first 2 weeks I will be having an impressions video and a review out, so if you do enjoy those 2 videos and find them informative and objective, expect more of the same for the Black Armoury and I will have that out as soon as possible and hopefully that will give you a rough idea of whether you want to invest in this or not. I'll also be streaming a lot of this either on my YouTube channel or on Twitch so you can check that out as well. But what about the weapons? Well I'll let Bungie do the honours on that one. 
You can definitely feel the theming in those weapons and the backstories and how they came to be and the, the roles that they perform. Izanagi's burden is the crazy sniper rifle where you have a magazine of four rounds and if you do the special reload, it actually crams all four bullets into a single round that does damage that is brutal and will like totally compete with Whisper and Sleeper. It's a sniper rifle that can body shot an enemy. That's all I need to say. The bow is from the Fringe family. It's beautiful. It feels a little thorny in the it's way it thorny, plays. Yeah. If you like thorn from Destiny 1, you're gonna love this bow. Yotun is the fusion rifle. It goes on your hand. It goes on your hand. It's the arm blaster, as it was affectionately referred to, and it fires a giant fireball slug that will set the ground on fire. And it follows you. And it will, yeah, it will track you down and murder you. It knows where you live. So we've got five new exotics, including four brand new awesome weapons and one old favorite. We have new legendaries, including the returning archetype of the machine gun. And then we've got a bunch of new weapon mods for you to configure. And we have new perks that uh, basically you have more options within columns. You have so more options within columns. If I had like Rampage and then Dragonfly, I could I could choose to pick between them. Yeah, you can choose. You can choose. In Black Armory, it's about new weapons, new activities, and doing all the I mentioned earlier that we're getting a new raid on the 7th, and much to my surprise, it finally gives me more of what I've always wanted, to explore the last city that bit more. It's like they knew what I wanted. If you're looking at these short little clips here, it's basically spawning six guardians into the city, you're sparrowing through the highways. This is what I want. I want to explore more of that city, and I hope Bungie doesn't stop here, and they actually give us proper quests within the city and open up the game a little bit more and maybe by Destiny 3 they make the whole of the Lost City a playable hub area where you can go get quests and stuff like that which was originally basically planned for Destiny 2 before they changed it. So we know we are getting 4 new exotics and 2 we get to see in action. The Inazagi Sniper which allows you to fuse 4 bullets to 1 and unleash a shot that can even one-shot Guardians with a body shot. It's pretty insane how this weapon is just going to wreck everything. I'm really looking forward to it and I can't wait to get my hands on it. I personally suck at snipers. You're looking at the dude that can't shoot a stationary target. But I will learn. This weapon has got me so excited that I will learn. Next we have one that's going to require some skill, but looks so much fun to use. The Anarchy, and boy will it bring Anarchy to all. The perk on this weapon is crazy. Say hello to the Colony 2.0. Good lord has Bungie finally fully embraced the complete broken nature of the weapons, and it seems despite the nerf to trench barrel, which sucks by the way, why people were crying for a nerf for a PvE weapon sucks. Everyone had the opportunity to get this weapon, but people had to cry about it, which sucks. Honestly, I'm really disappointed that this happened. But with that said, they will be pushing full steam ahead with all the DLC that will be hitting Destiny 2 Forsaken. The secret exotic, which will most likely be quested and be a part of the Drifter storyline, will be most likely the last word. Hype overload. I know, right? That's not all. We also have Arms Week and new catalysts to look forward to as well. These screens extracted by a Twitter user, which you can find the link to his Twitter channel in the description below, shows all these perks are going to be available with the craftsmanship, which I'm 99% sure is Arms Week. It just doesn't stop. I mean, if you haven't watched the full Vidoc yet, I'll play it now at the end of this video for you to watch because it's an amazing watch and it's really worthwhile sitting down and just watching it. You get to see small snippets of the weapons being fleshed on screen. You get to see some of the cool armor and basically what's to come. It's really worth watching. And if you're on the fence about getting the annual pass, 
this fight up may be what will basically tip you over the edge in order to get it. As always everyone, I appreciate every one of you for being here, and thank you for your continued support. Remain legend, and may the new grind begin. Destiny has fundamentally shifted with Forsaken, and I think that what you're going to see from now on is a lot of the philosophies that we learned and demonstrated are going to be carried forward. New pursuits, pinnacle activities, raids, new weapons, and more power, more power to go after. And that's what the seasons and the annual pass are about. Every time you log in for the reset on Tuesday, something's happening in the world that's changing. It's going to be like a little advent calendar where you're unwrapping the little gifts underneath the tree, not knowing exactly what's in them. We're not trying to do DLCs anymore. We're not trying to introduce a brand new campaign. Instead, what we want to do is deliver three full seasons of content that can last for an entire year, and that is coupled with the end game and matches the way players play Destiny. We're taking a really different approach this time around. We're changing that paradigm a lot. We're changing because of the player feedback. We're changing because of the reception to Dreaming City. And we're changing because players want to be able to experience the game, not just in day one feast mode. They want that buffet to last throughout the year and give them the reasons to keep coming back. For Forsaken, the quote was like, it's an end game with the campaign, not a campaign with an end game. And yeah. we are definitely like adding to the end game. Seasons are really about having content that is available for all players. It's Iron Banner, Crucible, holiday events. But Annual Pass is about having this additional layer of premium content on top of that. The most exciting destiny is that kind of unexpected destiny. That is so cool. They like open up portals. Ah, oh, <laughs> we had secrets in Forsaken, and now we want to do more secrets. But we can't talk about those, otherwise They're they, not they wouldn't be that anymore. anymore. So the yeah. nature of trying to surprise people is that sometimes you're gonna land things and sometimes you're not. The Forsaken Annual Pass is about continuing to like take those chances and take those risks and trying to surprise people with the different ways that we're gonna deliver content. Dude, this is awesome. It's tasty, nutritious, and delicious. It is dead taken. Whisper of the worm. Heck yeah. I'm not at 600 yet. I don't know if you are, nope. but like 580. 580. Yeah, 564. I think. He went on I mean, vacation. I went on me. vacation. It's fine. So every season, we are going to be raising the power cap by 50 for all Forsaken owners. They're still going to get new gear. They're going to get to raise their power to improve their guardian. For the annual pass, we want to provide a new way for you to pursue the end game. So in Season of the Forge, that's going to be the new Black Armory Forges and a new Horde mode-based experience. In Joker's Wild, Season of the Drifter, that's going to be new Pinnacle Gambit activities that you can play with your friends. And then in season seven, the focus is really on discovery and subversion and exciting new secrets that we can't wait for players to discover themselves. But the annual pass really starts going in earnest in December. That's going to be when you're going to discover the Black Armory. You are not welcome here, Guardian. Ada is representing the Black Armory, a faction that you've never heard of before. The Black Armory is all about mystery. They're all about being the ultimate weapon crafters. Ada has been keeping the secrets of the Black Armory since the Golden Age, trying to keep them away from uh, prying eyes of the Vanguard. Keep them away from the prying eyes of the Vanguard. She doesn't really trust Guardians, but some of the secrets have been lost even to her. She needs you to go out into the world and hunt down each forge, reclaim it, reignite it, and build out the arsenal even further. You will have to push back waves of enemies so that you can actually get your components into the forge and manufacture your weapon yourself. You're the blacksmith, and you are forging those weapons. Yeah. Like sci-fi yeah. meets magic. 
We've heard players asking for matchmaking and activities. This new Forge activity delivers on that. We're trying to address the challenge with like SMS protocol and blind well, where we know you want to play with people, you want to matchmake with them. And so this is our first step into solving that problem. The Black Armory is these lost craftsmen who developed these special weapons that from foundries we haven't seen before, all coming from the Norse and Japanese and French family lines. There's three families that were involved in the Black Armory. You can definitely feel the theming in those weapons and the backstories and how they came to be and the, the roles that they perform. Izanagi's burden is the crazy sniper rifle where you have a magazine of four rounds and if you do the special reload, it actually crams all four bullets into a single round that does damage that is brutal and will like totally compete with Whisper and Sleeper. It's a sniper rifle that can body shot an enemy. That's all I need to say. The bow is from the fringe family. It's beautiful. It feels a little thorny in the it's way it thorny, plays. Yeah. If you like Thorn from Destiny 1, you're going to love this bow. Yotun is the fusion rifle. It goes on your hand. It goes on your hand. It's the arm blaster, as it was affectionately referred to, and it fires a giant fireball slug that will set the ground on fire. And it follows you. And it will, yeah, it will track you down and murder you. It knows where you live. So we've got five new exotics, including four brand new awesome weapons and one old favorite. We have new legendaries, including the returning archetype of the machine gun. And then we've got a bunch of new weapon mods for you to configure. And we have new perks that uh, basically, you have more options within columns. You so have more if, options within columns. If I had like Rampage and then Dragonfly, I could, I could choose to pick between them. Yeah, you could choose. You could choose. In Black Armory, it's about new weapons, new activities, and doing all the pursuits to get more powerful to go into the raid. We're gonna mix it up. We're gonna go in the city. Like we've never done anything yeah. like that before, and it's awesome. And you drop straight into this old part of the city that you haven't ever been in because it's it's been off limits. It's about the unexpected. It's got vehicles. It's different in a very refreshing way. It's a throwback to Wrath of the Machine style combat. It's it's much more focused on high action, high adrenaline. Keep the throttle pegged. That would be my uh, my <laughs> advice. We really don't want to be a box product that you think of as being on a disc. We want to be a world that evolves and changes over time. Anytime you try something new, it's going to be uncomfortable. It's going to be scary, but we got to forge ahead. Like, the world's changing, games are changing. It's time to set a new course. Yeah. We don't want to play it safe. We want to take risks, and we want to have this annual pass explore some of these areas that we haven't done before. We think that started with Forsaken, and we liked what we did, and we want more of it. <laughs>